Dear Raymond, I trust you're well. Just a quick note to say things turn out okay thanks to you. Reading all those books and comments and writing all those stories about ponies and zombies will have greater value than I can tell you now. What you will see is that language is such a big part of you and any time spent developing this is worthwhile. Ignore every predicted grade and teacher who undermines your ability and sense of self and forgive them. You will come to understand the pressure on teachers and all the ways the system fails them too. The main thing I want to tell you is it's okay to be sensitive. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to ask people to repeat themselves if you can't hear them. Your hearing aids are an extension of you. You will grow into them. Please don't be ashamed. The right people will be the ones who come to you without judgment or ridicule. It's just a fact that some people are mean, but let them go their own way and forgive. Also, your father is not an easy man. I know what you've seen and heard. Some things are just shit and there's nothing to do but ride it out for a while. It is okay to be angry, but speak to another black man, if not your father, about your anger. It will help you channel it away from your mother and sister. It is not their fault they can't guide you through everything you go through. Be mindful that this is where you begin to, to depend on the women in your life. But some things you've got to work out on your own too. The biggest waste of time is worrying what other people think of you. Decide what opinions matter and listen to them. I know this is hard, especially when everyone questions your own identity as a mixed race boy with hearing aids. But you're lucky. You write about this and you begin to make sense for yourself. Stay strong, stay kind, stay gentle. Right. Dear Bridget, this will be short, which is strange because you've always talked as much as you do and that will never change, but I have three pieces of advice for you. One, sit in the sunshine more. Take your hay fever meds and listen to the plants and sit in the grass and ignore the spiders and the butterflies that you hate so much and learn to love it. Listen to the birds, learn what they're called, learn the sounds they make and embrace it. As the years go on, you'll realize that sounds of nature are hard to find sometimes and the more you work the more you actually miss something you never even liked so it's outside number two make the first move more the only regrets you'll have in your 20s are not kissing the people you should have kissed first say fuck off to embarrassment it doesn't matter i promise Embarrassment is only fleeting and lasts a couple of minutes or a day or a week or a month at most. But those regrets you'll have will last perhaps a lifetime. And number three. This is a difficult one. But embrace the opportunities or maybe beyond that, take the opportunities and stick with them. Try and control your brain a little bit better. Stop flitting from thing to thing to thing when you find the things that you love. You know straight away, don't doubt yourself. Don't second guess the way you feel about people or work or things. Because the things you want at 12 or 13 are the exact same thing, things you want 15 years later. And you spend a lot of time, too much time, asking yourself if that's okay and that's right and it is so go with it i guess you learn to love yourself so i won't tell you to do that you learn to be happy with your size and the way your voice sounds even if it annoys you even if it all annoys you so i won't tell you that either but listen to my advice if you can Dear Musa, 
it feels strange to be writing this, in one sense because this letter, let alone its author, probably shouldn't exist. Since you're reading this, it means that someone has successfully smuggled it back through time to find you, 15 years earlier. You are 22, and you are terrified. I know this because you are me, or I am you. I'm not sure which way round that goes, but bear with me. I've never spoken to my younger self before. You're so, so scared. Right now, you are watching the world that you so carefully built imploding before your eyes. You have just sustained an emotional blow so devastating that you are not sure you will survive it. You've broken up with a woman who you thought might be the love of your life. There was something timeless about her company, something so wise about her, much more so than the typical giddiness of a first love, because you have admitted that you are sexually attracted to men. I can safely say, all these years later, that it is the bravest thing that you will ever do, and that this is an act of courage that will come to define you. Because you could have lied to her and to yourself, but you didn't. You loved her, and that was why you let her go. As for your sexuality, I don't know what to say about that. All I can say is, it will be a journey for you. I don't want to give you too many spoilers, because if I do, then I am worried that you will not end up as the man that you, that I, am today. And I'm not saying that I am perfect, far from it. Instead, I am at a point that I never thought I would reach, that I am a good person, something I never thought I'd be able to say. A good person. Imagine that. I am telling you all this at a time when you've never hated yourself more. You hate yourself so much that you are smashing your head against the end of the bed each night, trying to bash the gay out. You hate yourself so much that you can't sleep. You are getting up at 2am, putting on your football kit and running through the park under the floodlights. Football will rescue you for now. It's the only thing that makes sense right now, that match you play every Saturday morning. You're going to play the season of your life. Put a bet on it now going to be so focused on that field that defenders will offer as much resistance to you as holograms. You are so heartbroken at losing your girlfriend, you'll wake up at 3am, your body will be violent with the storm of your weeping. You are so distracted by the thought that you'll be disowned by your conservative family and community that you are unable to study, and you will struggle to pass the easiest of exams. This is bad news, I know. Not that it's news as such. You already know most of it, and could deduce much of the rest. What you don't know is that 15 years later, you will have success that you could never have imagined. I'm not saying you're going to be living in a castle in the clouds. If you wanted to do that, you should have taken that job at Goldman Sachs. No, you will have a different kind of success. Trust me. You will be highly respected and even loved by many of your peers. And you will be known as someone who persists and perseveres. In your personal life, you will find love. And the woman whose heart you fear you have shattered will find love too. Though your paths will diverge, that mutual compassion will be there, always. A little word of warning. It's going to feel, at times, as if life is getting much worse than it is now. That's an illusion. Your life got better the second you were true to yourself. Here's some advice. Catch a train to Green Park one Saturday and buy a silver ring and put it on the fourth finger of your right hand. That ring will remind you of the worst moment life ever threw at you and that you are strong enough to come through it. That ring is still in my hand now. I'm not going to tell you too much more because I don't want to ruin the show ahead. I'm just going to toss out some words that won't make any sense at all now, but each time you encounter these people and these scenarios, you'll smile. So, here are the words. Froshtiga, Levine, Shanghai, Sarah, Scrubius, 
Shadbolt, Issy, Jody, Pojazzy, Talberg, Heavyweight, Passport, Murdoch, Berlin. Whenever you encounter any of these words, say yes. Please don't hesitate. Trust me. The door will open and you will sprint through and onto experiences and adventures richer than you could ever have imagined. Now, I'm not going to tell you what you'll be doing in 15 years. All I'll tell you is that you'll be happy. Happier than you could ever have imagined. Doing things with words that will fulfill you. I don't know where our father, my father, your father, is right now, because I'm still not sure what happens after we die. But a funny thing happened recently. I suddenly thought, you know what? I think my father would be proud to know me. I thought it and I meant it. How about that, Musa? That's all you or I ever really wanted. Go for it, my friend. Though it may not feel that way, you are lucky because you have been given everything you need to succeed. And, my God, you will meet people only too willing to help you. Leap, Musa. Leap. And, once you have landed on ever further and more exciting soil, keep travelling. So much love, your future self. P.S. Watch out for your sister Miriam. Dark horse, that one. Absolute superstar. Hello Jodie and people of the exhibition in Birmingham. My name is Jack Rook. Thank you very much for inviting me to write this sort of poem letter. Pletter, shall we say. Uh, it's to 15 year old me. I'm going to just start. Dear 15 year old Jack. Yes, dad has died. Yes, mum cries all the time. Yes, your older brothers are acting like pricks. Yes, your GCSEs start next week. Yes, you might lose the house. Yes, MIA has retired. I mean, come on. Yes, you're probably gay. Yes, your penis is a bit on the small side for now. But things change. Everything grows. And the one thing you can't change is that things will always do just that. Nothing will change the noise of your hero in that hospice with cancerous lungs croaking like the last few drops of a juice carton. That will forever ring in your ears, but the frequency of repeat plays will slowly decline until you hear it only with an understanding of what mortality is, and how important it is to not waste your days ticking off the bad things. Instead, take care of yourself. You will grow. Mum will cry less. She won't stop but she'll smile more. Your brothers will stop being wankers one day, I promise. You will smash your GCSEs in the arse, and I mean like an A star in English language that none of your teachers think you'll get. You will live in so many houses. Don't let possessions possess you. Home is not a building. It's about saying we before me. And MIA? Well, let me tell you, mate. MIA puts paper planes in a movie that gets nominated for a Grammy, okay? And then she performs at the Grammys with Jay-Z, Kanye West and Lil Wayne. She doesn't even retire. And you will meet her one day, fucked out your brains at a festival called Bestival, which you will help run. And MIA will sign your copy of her book with the words, do it, whilst also mocking your haircut. But you won't mind because she's your hero. And your other hero, Dad, will be so proud that even though he's not around to say it, you will still feel his pride. And yes... You are gay. And yes, your penis will grow and men will really quite enjoy it. So stop, for heaven's sake, comparing it to the size of the Sky TV you know. That is ridiculous and disgusting. People have got to use this. You will hate being gay at times and then fully embrace it in others, but understand it is not your identity. Loss 
is not your identity. Your problems will also never all be solved. You will lose a mate to themselves, a young friend you will feel adamant should have stayed for the rest of the party. He will leave you for a piece of string from his seat. And you'll have that feeling with you forever, but don't let it win. Let life win, because you need to live one for him. Your identity is fighting life. Do it. To Jodie, age 16. Firstly, I need to let you know how enough you are, exactly as you are, the size that you are, as sparky as you are, as loud and ever so strange you are. You bring so much joy to the lives of people around you with your unique perspective of this big old world and its endless twists and turns. All of this, hold on to it, fiercely. Concrete your heels into the ground and wrap barbed wire around that heart and fill jars and jars with that spirit for rainy days. This world will try and break you and make you feel like you're not worth the grief. Boys with floppy hair and distracted minds will make you feel like you need to be smaller, prettier, more invisible. But you, all that you are, is perfect. Never change because somebody made you feel like you should. Mean words are often said through jealousy and insecurity and I know that's really hard to believe but it is. Hold on to the friends that make you feel like the very best version of you. Ask more questions. Don't wear jeans that sit under your bum. Stop telling yourself you're not smart because studying bores you. Don't bother with uni. Travel and write postcards and letters telling of all the adventures you had. Don't let anybody tell you you feel too much. It's one of your greatest assets. Nobody will ever hurt you as much as you can hurt yourself. Stand taller, speak louder, eat often, laugh and love constantly. Don't drink anything that is blue or green or spirit straight, except whiskey. That comes way later though. Anxiety and panic are monsters. They don't live within you. You are not made up of them. When they try and creep in, shout loudly at them, horrible little assholes. You are stronger than you know. They breed on self-loathing, so I will continue to stress the importance of loving yourself. You will laugh when you read this, but go and get some post-its and write all of the lovely things about you. Stick them on mirrors, put them in pockets, on cupboard doors. It's okay to need it sometimes. You're not failing at anything. Don't rush to grow up. The world is always, always going to be there and nowhere will ever feel as safe and cosy as home. Life is going to be full of some absolutely amazing but also some really, really awful things that right now you couldn't imagine getting through, but you do. Get to the other side. Your road was never meant to be a smooth one. It's full of hills and twists and turns, but I promise your experience of all of it will make you. Wear good shoes. Let the right ones in and trust your gut. It sounds so cliche, but it's mostly pretty much always. But mostly, above all things, please be kinder to yourself. Love, Jodie. 28. P.S. You won't believe me, but you really learn to like olives and red wine. No, you're not French. Skin. But thrifty. Love you. <laughs>